Hello and welcome to the Monday Market Update with me, Dev Madden. Uh, today's date is Monday the 21st of May 2018 and the time has just gone 11.25 British summer time. So as always with our Monday Market Updates, what we'll do is we'll have a quick look at the week ahead and the week ahead can be found on the news and analysis section of our website. So it's going to be a quiet enough start to this week. Um, looking ahead to Wednesday, we have France, French, German, uh, and all the uh, France, German, and Eurozone, and all the major Eurozone PMI numbers coming out for both services and manufacturing. Bearing in mind, some of the economic indicators from the Eurozone recently have been a little on the soft side, um, particularly on, on the in relation to inflation, which would suggest demand isn't that high, and if, and if demand is dwindling in the Eurozone, it could force the ECB to keep their monetary policy looser for longer. Uh, so depending on how those figures come in, uh, it could, cause, could obviously have a big impact on the euro. Bearing in mind, the US dollar has been very strong recently, which we'll be talking about later on when we look at some charts. And But bearing in mind, if the perception is that the eurozone is going to be a bit of an economic soft patch, we could see continued pressure on the single currency. And speaking of the US dollar, on Wednesday we have an update from the Federal Reserve. Um, this, this will... This will give, give us an idea of how likely the Fed, the Fed are going to raise rates three more times this year. Now, the, the U.S. dollar has had a very good run in the last few weeks, as has U.S. government bond deals. The markets have the attitude that we could see three more rate hikes from the Federal Reserve in 2018. But this update on Wednesday will give us a clearer picture of just what the U.S. Central Bank are thinking. In terms of companies, m and I'll pull your figures out on Wednesday. On Thursday, talk, talk, I'll pull your numbers out. And on Friday... From the United States Foot Locker, we have first quarter results. So, looking at the uh, at the markets this morning, what we can see is that the um, the Euro European equity markets have gotten off to quite a decent start. The FTSE 100 is at a record high, and the CAC and the CAC 40 over in France has hit a new 10-year high. Uh, essentially, um, the news over the over the weekend that the United States of America won't be as have, have suspended their plans to impose tariffs on 150 billion dollars worth of goods from China has really boosted um, trade talks and also has boosted uh, global sentiment uh, in terms of the equity markets. So China and, Relay have an, and the United States are still in negotiation, uh, but Beijing have stated they're going to significantly increase their, their purchasing of U.S. goods. So America has, uh, has suspended its intentions to um, place tariffs on, one, on goods worth $150 billion dollars. Uh, that, 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 go to China, that, that, that come from China every single year. So the overall market sentiment is quite positive. So then I'll take a look at a couple of the major charts here in Europe. So take a look at, at the FTSE 100. As, it's, as I mentioned, uh, it's, it's north of 7,800. Uh, we've, we've hit a fresh record high. It's been in a solid and, if anything, quite a remarkable upward trend for the past two months. So the market continues to push higher. Price is, is, the, is the best indicator. So the market's pushing higher. So... It, 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 should we continue on to, to drive on higher from here, the next big level to watch out for will, of course, be 7,900. Uh, buying on the dip has been a popular strategy over the past seven or eight weeks. So if we do see any pullbacks, we may find some fresh buyers enter the fold. So we might find support in around the 7,800 area or perhaps down as low as 7,550. 7, uh, we may even find buyers even down at these levels here, 7,000. 685 or perhaps even as low as 7,630. I will say this, the market is pushing higher but we are seeing a fairly obvious decline in positive momentum looking at the MACD indicator. So the market is pushing higher so that, that's, that's, that's clearly bullish but the rate at which the market is moving higher is in decline so the momentum, so the fact that the bulls are running out of steam, that the buyers are running out of momentum. Now this could be an indication we may see a bit of a pullback but as I said, the most important thing to keep an eye on is the price. And the price is clearly going to the upside for the time being. Take a look now at what's going on over in France. The CAC 40 has reached a yet yeah, a new 10-year high. Levels not seen since the credit crisis. Uh, European markets as a whole have had a good run in, uh, in the last couple of months. As you can see here, the, uh, the, the CAC 40 since March really has, has been pushing higher. Once again, in a solid upward trend. We're at 10-year highs. So that, that tells you all you know. You need to know about what, what, what the sentiment is. Clearly positive. Any pullbacks in, in the CAC may find some support in around the 5,600 area. Or, if you, or even if you have a wider uh, correction, you may find some support coming into play in around the 5,525 mark in around here. Or perhaps even down 
as low as 5,500 itself. Moves to the upside, of course, should we continue on in this positive trend. The next big level to watch out for will be the psychological number, the psychologically important number of 5,700. American markets are tipped to open higher as well. They're not in as good a shape as those of the of equity markets in Europe, but they are they are in a fairly decent shape. This is the um, the Dow Jones here. So as you can see, the, the 20 moving average, this red line here, acted a decent support. Or we, we, we had a few uh, moves below, but by and large, acted a decent support in recent months. The market has been pushing higher here. As you can see, that the the Dow Jones has just about traded above this yellow line here, the 50-day moving average. I apologise, the 100-day moving average, which comes into play just south of two thousand uh, of twenty-five thousand. The market, if it takes out um, last Monday's high of uh, twenty-four thousand nine hundred and ninety-five, if you take out that level, which we're not too far away from at the moment, that will then bring us back to levels not seen since mid-March. So we would we would be at multi-month highs on the Dow Jones. And if we continue on, if we make a sizable move north of twenty-five thousand. The next big level to keep an eye out for will, of course, be the mid-March high of 25,507. And if you go north of that, the late February high of 25, 25,821. Moves to the downside may find some support here from this blue line, the 50 moving average, which comes to play at 24,422. Notice how it acted as both as resistance and support uh, only a few weeks ago. And if it's been... If it has been a significant level for, for support or resistance recently, it's more likely to do it again in the near term. We'll take a look now at the S&P 500, which in terms of price action has had a fairly similar move. Uh, the S&P 500 isn't quite near multi-week, has just come off multi-month highs as well, but we could be looking at retesting those uh, sooner up again. So as you can see here, the S&P 500 is holding above this, this yellow line here. It's... 100 day moving average which comes to the play uh, 2711 but the, but then again we haven't actually quite take haven't take, taken off the may high yet of 27742 should we go north of that the next area to keep an eye for to the upside would be 2752 and we want to go beyond that traders but then we're looking up towards 2800 should he move to the downside and, and, and the S&P 500, we may find support coming into play at this blue line here at 2,677, or perhaps even down as low as the 30 moving average, which comes this, this red line here, which comes into play at 2,632. So we've been talking about how um, equity markets are in, are in decent shape. That, that's, that's the equity market which has been under a bit of pressure recently, and that is the, uh, the gold market. Uh, there's been a very strong inverse relationship between the price of gold and the US dollar. Uh, the, the greenback has been at um, multi-month highs, and so conversely, we're seeing a lot of pressure on the price of gold. So we, can see, we see here, we saw here that, that, that the 2 moving average, this red line here, acts as a decent support for the price of gold in the first half of the month. Then it crashed through that level here. And as you can see, it's been grinding lower ever since. Um, we're now at levels not seen since late December. In fact, in fact we've actually created new uh, five-month lows for the price of gold. So that tells you all, all that you need to know about sentiment. If you, continue to, if you continue to push lower from here, we could be looking heading down towards 1280 or perhaps even as low as 1270. And if you take out 1270, last uh, the October low uh, in around the 1260 area may come then into play. Most of the upside, we really would need to, need to take out the trend moving average which comes to play at 13.07 before we actually look to actually um, feel that this recent downward trend has come to an end. And if we go north of that, the next big area to keep an eye out for will be the mid-May high of 13.26. Uh, we'll take a look now at what's going on in the oil market. Both, w, both Brent and WTI have been very strong recently. Both have come off fresh 42-month highs. Last week, uh, only on Thursday, we saw fresh 42-month high on crude oil. They traded well north uh, of $80 a barrel. So the market has been in a solid upward trend. Take a look at the wider mark here from last June. It's a classic example of an upward trend, higher highs and higher lows. Granted, we had a fairly sizable um, we had a fairly sizable pullback here in February, but once again, the upper, the wider upward trend resumed. And like I said, only, uh, only last week, a few sessions ago, we hit fresh 42-month highs. So the market's clearly in an upward trend. Uh, if the market continues to, to, to trend higher, what we, could see, what we could see is Tarek getting $81 a barrel or $82 a barrel 
Uh, pullbacks may find some support uh, from last Wednesday low, um, just north of $78 a barrel at 78.05, or perhaps even down at last Monday's low of just north of $77 a barrel, or perhaps even down at uh, $76.45 in around the, this, this price action here for Brent crude. Now, I'll take a look at the chart for WTI, a very similar looking chart uh, in that it's been in a solid upward trend for about 11 months. Uh, the market once again last uh, a few sessions ago on a few sessions ago on Thursday we hit fresh 42 month highs. The market has been a touch lower since from then. So if we continue this positive trend at the at the old market scene, we could be looking at you know, re retesting 72, uh, heading up towards 73, 74, and so on. Moves to the downside may find some support in on the 71 dollar mark. Or perhaps down as low as 70 spot 26 or 70 dollars itself. Uh, it's only really if you take out uh, the, the, the early May lows of 66 spot 79, but then we actually look at the market potentially turning over on itself. But for the time being, and given what's going on with the uncertainty in relation to the Iranian deal and, and, and uh, pending new sanctions on Iran, I suspect the, the sentiment is going to remain positive for oil in the near term. Take a look now at the euro dollar, as I mentioned at the top of the, uh, the top of the video. The US dollar is at a uh, multi-month high, not, not, levels not seen since the back end of 2018. And as you can see here, the euro has had a sizable sell-off versus the US dollar uh, in the past month. This combination of uh, softening economic uh, growth from the eurozone and also a belief or a switch in sentiment in relation to the US dollar and the Federal Reserve uh, traders believe that we could see four, uh, three more rate hikes from the Federal Reserve in 2018. So what this has led to is the considerable sell-off in the euro versus US dollar. As you can see, your crash, crash straight through the 200-day moving average. The market rebounded, didn't quite get up to the 200-day moving average, and then turned lower again. So today on euro dollar, we've if it left, if it's fresh six-month lows, levels not seen, uh, levels not seen since um, October, sorry, apologies, seven month lows, never not seen since October, November last year. So we are talking at fresh multi-month lows on the um, on the euro versus the U US dollar. If we continue to, to push lower from here, and uh, we could be looking at heading back down towards 116.70. And if we go south of that, we could be looking at heading at the November low uh, at 115.54. Most of the upside may run into resistance in around 118. 119, but the real level that needs to be kind of taken, taken, uh, take, retaken rather, uh, before traders could look to, to to be confident this negative true has been shaken off, is the red line here, the trending moving average, which comes to play at one one spot 2017. It's been a similar move on the pound versus the US dollar. There were there were um, a significant percept significant change in perception recently in relation to what the Bank of England were going to do. There's a lot of talks the Fed we've got the the Fed apologise the Bank of England were going to raise rates this month, which which they didn't. And now the and other and now the, the Bank of England look uh, look far more uh, look, look, look far more uh, dovish than, than they recently did. So we've seen a considerable sell off in the pound versus the US dollar. There's a notice how there's a lot of consolidation in around this red line here of the Trinity moving average hall. So, there was a really kind of sticking point. The market spent a lot of time, 50, 50 or 70 points in around, 50 pips away or 70 pips away from that level. But then eventually the market broke below the recent lows and has now traded uh, down towards the kind of 134 mark, 11 not seen since December last year. Should we continue to push ourselves up here, we could be looking heading back down towards 133. So the outlook for the pound versus the US dollar, um, we haven't seen any signs that this downward trend is coming to an end. If you do manage to push higher, you wouldn't need to take off the recent lows of 134.50, and if you go beyond that, we'd really need to get back above the the 136 area before traders can become more confident that the upward move, that that the the downward trend has come to an end. And a move north of one uh, 136 could bring could bring the um the late April low of 130 137.12 back on the cards. That's so before I wrap things up. I just want to point out a few things on a trading platform here. Um, market insights here. There'll be a, a recording of this video on, on, on insights here, as with other updates that we do throughout the day. Uh, some of them are news analysis, some of them are data alerts. Um, in relation to the chart forum, which, which can be which can be found on the Market Pulse, 
Um, the third option down is Chart Forum. And the other market pulse, the second option down is Market Insights, what I was just talking about. This is a section of, of, the, of the trading platform where you can comment on a particular market. Uh, if you take a look here, you can just take a quick look of um, a snapshot of a colleague Michael did, uh, a picture here of the euro dollar, a quick snapshot, a snapshot of the euro dollar chart, and also he wrote a few hundred words about the price action and potential levels of interest on the chart form. So keep an eye on that because it gets updated several times throughout the day. Well, that's all for me this week. Thank you very much.